Hello there. I thought for this particular tech tip, I'd go through some of my workflow processes. I think that's something that doesn't get as much attention as maybe it should in these kind of tech tip tutorial things, because, you know, the workflow that you use to write a track is your most important tool. And um, if you've got good practices, then you're probably going to be in a position to be able to finish more, more tracks, which is the name of the game as far as I'm concerned. Now then, um, this is something I've been working on recently, and I'm just going to play you a few bars just to give you an idea. Now, in my workflow, when I'm in creative mode, I tend to throw in lots of tracks. And if you're anything like me, you just start piling them up one after another. And you can very quickly get to a situation where you get lost. And one of the ways that I get around this is to group tracks. If I press Command and hold down individual tracks in the Arrange, you'll see that I'm able to highlight them. If I highlight all the ones that I see that are drums, I might miss a few, so forgive me. Let's see. That's most of them. I don't include the kick drum, incidentally. This is just my personal workflow, but I, I tend to group drums and percussion together, and the, and the kick I keep separate, along with any side chains. You'll see what happens when I actually move them. It's automatically grouped all those drum elements for me. And if I release them here, you'll see that I've got all my drums in one place. Very useful. The second thing that I like to do is make sure that everything's the same color, which sounds really simple. But you'd be amazed how quickly you understand where things are if everything's grouped according to color. My personal system and Logic is a bit lacking on colors. They used to let you have white and black, but they've, for reasons best known to themselves, they've taken that off the list. So you now have this color palette. This used to only be two, but they've recently updated it to four different gradients. I have red for kick drums, blue for drums and percussion, yellow for keys, synths, pianos, etc., green for vocals, light blue for effects, and brown for bass lines. So if I highlight all of these in the drum area and then press blue, you'll see that it's automatically turned everything blue in the arrange. If you press control and click on the channel strip name, you get the option to change the track color within the mixer. Assign track color and you'll see it gives you the existing colors within your selection. Hit blue and now all my drum elements, if I go to the mixer, are now in blue as well. Grouping of course goes deeper than that and you can create what Logic call track stacks, which is the same as groups in Ableton. And these are discrete auxiliary submixes that allow you to have greater control over the mix on different groups of tracks. Drums is a classic example of where you would want to create a track stack or a group. So once again, I would press Control, right click, and create track stack. You get two options. You can create a folder stack, which is a basic track stack, as it tells you, that lets you mute solo and control volume from the main track. And it's more for organization and workflow. I tend to use summing stacks because you can put insert plugins on the boss and save them as a patch. So let's do that. I'm going to save that as drums. And here's another one of my workflow preferences. I write groups or submixes with capital letters and then tracks with lowercase. Now you'll notice I didn't pull in all the drums and that's because for reasons that escape me um, at the moment, sometimes when you try to create a track stack, you can't do it. It's probably to do with some of the routines that I've got going on on this track, but I've not been able to find a logical reason for that yet. So if anybody out there can enlighten me, please do so. I'm just going to right click and color the auxiliary group itself. And now you see I have this group and I can kind of apply whatever I want. Be it a little bit of compression. So 
So let's do the same for the um, melodic elements. I've got a piano there. You'll see that green is the color that Logic defaults to for any new MIDI event. And by pulling them, I've created a melodic area. And I'm just going to do the same thing again. I'm going to right click, assign track color, yellow. And let me just do the same here. Create the summing stack. I'll call that keys. And then if I was to identify all the other bits and pull them into that auxiliary group, you'll see that it's now got all the keys in there as well. And if I change the color to yellow, you start to see that by having these groups color coded, and logically laid out, you can quickly start to organize your song in a way that allows you to edit quickly and, and basically get through a track. Some of this stuff I'm not going to use, for example, these ones, and this leads into another handy tip that I always use, which is to hide tracks. By pressing H, you get the option to hide the tracks in the arrange, and if you've got them all highlighted, you only need to press it once. Press H to hide those tracks, and they've gone. Another great thing you can do is, let me go to the project data. All of these audio files that have been in the project since the beginning and maybe aren't being used. If I was to highlight everything and right click with control, I can select the unused audio files. If I hit delete on my keyboard, they've all gone. And if you ever want to um, collapse a group so you can see everything very quickly and clearly, just press, press Alt or Option plus mouse click, and then all the audio files in use are quickly available for you to see. The final file management tip that I want to share with you is the idea of saving as an alternative. If you go to the main menu, Project Alternatives, New Alternative, I'm going to call this Memento Sonic. I press OK. Do you want to save the changes made to the alternative Memento? I want to save them. And now, next time I open this track, I'm given the option to open whichever alternative I've saved with all these settings and all these files saved within the project. It just means that you don't have to keep continually saving new projects, potentially resaving data, resaving uh, space hogging bits of audio in brand new projects where you don't need them. So it's good for your file management systems as well. And one other thing, this is more about the workflow process itself. If I go to my keys and I go back to those pianos that I had at the beginning, let's just say Let's just say I've got the arrangement the way I want it, and I, I don't want to do any more editing. I don't want to do any more sound design. I don't want to do any more arrangement work. I will often bounce everything down to audio. And the reason I do that is it gives me a virtual line in the sand. It means I can focus completely on the mix and the arrangement, and I'm not tempted to mess around with any more plugins, any more parameters on synths. It's just pure blocks of audio. So for me, that's a real mental help in terms of transitioning from one stage of the process to another. Other people's workflow, of course, may be different. I find it very helpful. And the way I do that, once again, your friendly control key, right click and bounce in place. When you get the option to bounce in place, you can also include your audio tail, you can include your volume pan automation, you can normalize, and you can even bypass the effect plugins. I'm just gonna bounce it exactly as it is. And you'll see that that pops up an exact audio bounce of those pianos. Great for stem mixing. Okay, so that was just a few tips and tricks for workflow and process management. I hope you find it useful. 
thanks everybody for watching commenting and indeed liking we really do appreciate all the support we get here on our sonic academy youtube channel so if you find this video super useful please we'd love you to hit the subscribe button we update the uh, youtube channel every week with new content and if you want to watch some more relevant content just click on the videos beside me